Hi, I'm Peter, Technical Program Manager here in the Cisco Security Business Group. And in today's video, I'll be covering Cisco Secure Firewall's 7.6 release highlights. In total, I'll be lightly covering seven sections worth of features or improvements listed here. And should you want more details, please check the description below for links to our documentation site and full release notes. Getting us started, we have everyone's favorite, artificial intelligence with two new features of note. The first is AI Assistant for FMC, where the AI Assistant chatbot is enabled by default upon successful onboarding to the CDO or newly named Security Cloud Control tenant and allows FMC administrator user roles to access it in the menu bar. Upon being selected, the chatbot provides an intuitive interface for administrators to obtain information on policies, expedite troubleshooting and detection, and locate misconfigurations for update to improve the device's security and performance. To interact with the AI Assistant, all you need to do is type your question in the search bar and a response will appear with source information in the same window. Additionally, if you need to ask multiple questions, your previous answers are stored off to the left. Our second enhancement for artificial intelligence is the new Policy Analyzer and Optimizer that automatically exports and analyzes access control policies upon CDO or Security Cloud Control integration. With the integration in place, CDO lists all FMCs and allows users to select a specific device to see a full list of its analyzed policies. In the tool window, you will see observations about the policy, the analysis status, and by selecting a policy, you can download an analysis report or click view details and optimize to be taken to the policy analysis dashboard for additional insights. You can also download the report here by clicking download analysis report in the top right. Next up, we have four threat and malware enhancements and one honorable mention that continue to differentiate our firewall offering for our customers. Starting us off, we have the new Snort Machine Learning Inspector, which is an intrusion prevention system or IPS rule that is enabled by default and automatically fires whenever the neural network detects an attack, thereby increasing network protection from unknown identified threats. To dig a little deeper in how this works, the model file, which is a built and trained neural network by Talos, is delivered via a lightweight security package that is used by the Snort ML inspector to detect exploits. The inspector will generate a 411 event whenever the neural network sees malicious data and any future changes to the model, like supporting new exploit types, will be completed via LSP updates. To see all activity, users can navigate to Objects, Intrusion Rules, Snort 3, All Rules, and filter on the new built-in IPS rule, GID 411. Moving on, we have the new Do Not Decrypt Multi-Step Policy Wizard. This offers the option to configure decryption exclusions for outbound connections that will not impact existing decryption policies. When working with the wizard, you'll enter a policy name, configure outbound protection, select an internal certificate authority, and then click Next to configure decryption exclusions, which has undecryptable domains and undecryptable applications selected by default. To enable sensitive URL categories, click the checkbox to the left and click the add button on the right to select and deselect other URL categories from the pop-up list. With the bypass decryptions chosen, users should review their selections by noting URL category selected, if enabled, and check the default list by clicking the related dropdowns. Once everything has been reviewed, all that's left is to click create policy. At number three for threat and malware, we have the new encrypted visibility engine exclusion list that allows customers to bypass Eve's verdict for blocking a connection based on attributes like process names and destination IP address, thereby allowing connections from trusted networks, internal penetration testing, and labs. To configure your device for Eve exception, Eve itself and block traffic based on Eve score must be enabled. Once they are, users will note a new add exception rule button on the bottom right that when selected will open a new window for users to add an Eve identified process name to the exception rule, add it to the process, and then save it to the exception rule list. Quick note, network objects is where users can use destination IP addresses instead of process name. With the process added to the exception list, users can review and make any edits needed before deploying policy changes. To see this in action, go to the unified events viewer 
And anytime a connection matches an exception rule, you'll see in the reason column that it has been marked Eve exempted. Also, in unified events, if you see a connection that shouldn't be blocked by Eve, you can simply select the three dots within the reason column and click add this connection to the Eve exception list. At number four, we have security content tagging and data plane enhancements that include updates to the unified event viewer giving it a single pane view for MITRE attack techniques. Enhancements include a progression graph that visualizes the progress of an attack in the attack framework, a new pane for context enrichment, and a detail link to the MITRE attack framework for more information. For non-MITRE information, an additional other enrichment column is now available that includes the technique, tactic names, or rule categories for added context. Finally, the one honorable mention for threatened malware is the new experimental feature Quick Decryption that enables the inspection of quick connections on firewall devices and allows for deep packet inspection and policy enforcement on quick traffic. The feature is disabled by default, but to test out this new feature, simply go to Policies, Decryption, click Edit on the policy, which opens the policy editor, select Advanced Settings, and click the pill to enable this new feature. Making it to our third section, we have software-defined wide area networking with two enhancements and one update for virtual routing and forwarding support. Adding further reasoning to why our secure firewall is a great solution for branch deployments. The first is the new simplified SD-WAN topology configuration wizard that is on FMC and helps users create a route-based hub and spoke topology with minimal clicks and inputs. To launch the wizard, go to Devices, VPN, site to site and click the add button in the top right. Doing this causes the create VPN topology window to appear with several options that will then validate if you meet the prerequisites needed for the listed options. Focusing on the new SD-WAN topology selection, when a user chooses this and clicks create, they're taken through a four-step process consisting of hub configuration, spoke configuration, authentication settings, and SD-WAN settings. When these are completed, a final summary page will show the full configuration and allow users to either modify any section by clicking the corresponding edit link or save the build by clicking finish to generate the virtual tunnel interfaces and add them to the selected security zone. With the wizard covered, this takes us to our second enhancement, device templates and bulk pre-provisioning, which is more like two in one, that allows users to create and configure device templates that can then be used for bulk provisioning. Template creation has three options. Users can create a new template, generate a template from an existing device registered in FMC, or clone an existing template from an FMC to another using the device template export and import option. To create a new device template, users can go to devices, template management, and select add device template to name the template, choose an existing access control policy, and generate the template by clicking OK. With the new template created, users can now use the new device template in the new Add Device Wizard by going to Device, Device Management, clicking Add, and choosing Device Using Template from the drop-down menu. Doing this opens the wizard and users are taken through a four-step process, starting with Device Registration Method, where users can choose either the registration key for single device registration with a template or serial number for bulk registration. We'll go with serial number and click next to confirm our selection. This takes us to the second section where users will choose the domain to register the devices to. Please note that as you make selections, a summary of the previously completed step or steps appear above and allow you to go back and make changes as needed. With registration and domain completed, the third step is to choose the onboarding method by selecting either access policy or device template. Since we previously created a new template, we will go with that option, and you can see that if you have more than one available template, a drop-down list will show all available options. Once one is selected, basic details such as supported device models and the access policy are shown, allowing users to verify before moving to the final step, which is file upload. Here, the wizard offers a sample CSV template that can be used for the upload. Once it's uploaded, the summary of the file is shown and identifies if there is any errors. If there aren't any, you can move on to add the devices. Closing out SD-WAN, we have an update on AAA virtual routing and forwarding. 
In that, we have simply extended the 741 VRF support to now add AAA VRF support for FTD management on data interfaces, enabling our customers to partition their management interface traffic into different network segments for ease of operations and management. Reaching our fourth section, we have hardware innovations with one new product delivery, a new feature for the 4200 series, and four additional enhancements. Beginning with our newest hardware, we are excited to announce the new Cisco Secure Firewall 1200 series. The series includes three desktop models, the 1210CE, the 1210CP, and 1220CX. Each features an ARM system on a chip, and the three models in the family are built on the 8-core version of the SoC, coupled with 16 gigabits of RAM, have built-in NVMe storage, and there are eight one gigabit ethernet ports with power over ethernet or small form factor pluggable capabilities. Beyond announcing the new 1200 series, we have a software improvement that advances the 4200 series platform, multi-instance. Now in 741, we added multi-instance to the 3100 series, and in 7.6, we've now added it to the 4200 series, with the main difference being the maximum number of instances each device supports. For reference, the lowest 4200 series, the 4215, matches the highest 3100 series, the 3140, at 10 maximum instances. With multi-instance for 4200 series covered, we've reached the four additional enhancements we've made in 7.6. The first being USB port control for the front panel USB Type-A port. Previously, there was no option to disable the list, but now the 1010, 1100, 3100, and 4200 series provide a configurable option to disable it. Our second enhancement to our hardware is a new two port 400 gig network module for the 4200 series to support higher bandwidth requirements. And it supports 400 gigabit, 200 gigabit, 100 gigabit, or 40 gigabit full duplex operation por per port. Next up at number three, we have individual interface mode support for clustering of the Secure Firewall 3100 and 4200 series devices, allowing high traffic isolation and more granular topology handling as each traffic type can have a dedicated interface. Closing us out at number four is crypto acceleration for datagram transport layer security, where we've accelerated DTLS connections for Secure Firewall 3100 and 4200 series devices, enhancing their ability to manage encrypted traffic, have lower latency, and increase their overall performance. Approaching the back half of the presentation, we arrive at Identity, which has two notable updates. The first being the new Passive Identity Agent. The Passive Identity Agent provides passive identity without the need of Cisco's Identity Services Engine. And the second is support for active authentication using SAML-based identity providers, including Azure, Google, and Okta. Please note that ICE still remains an option for customers who need additional features. And now we've reached everyone's favorite topic, management and upgrade improvements. And for 7.6, we have two major enhancements. The first is the creation of the new FMC high availability upgrade wizard that reduces the amounts of steps needed and clicks required to perform an upgrade by 50% through various automations. Additionally, with improved HA validations for an FTD upgrade, Failure rates have been cut by up to 70%. Now, when interacting with the new FMC High Availability Upgrade Wizard, you'll notice the new sleek and simplified UI, the workflow path for the upgrade, along with upgrade details, pre-checks, recommendations, and important points to follow. And when performing the FTD upgrade or upgrades, the FMC will check for any failures, and if there is an issue, an appropriate message will be displayed in the FMC user interface under log details. Moving on to the second enhancement, we land on the change management workflow and magnetic framework updates. Now change management isn't new in 7.6, but what is, is the ability for administrators or network admins to now take over a ticket and assign it to themselves or another user for approval, thereby reducing change request delays when a request is sent in to a, an approver who isn't available. Regarding the magnetic framework, Cisco is always working to deliver a world-class portfolio experience through thoughtful design and we have adopted the magnetic design system into our product. To turn on the new experience, simply go to user preferences and select the new theme to try it out. Finally, at our last section, we have reached public cloud, which has three notable enhancements. The first is AWS multi-availability zone clustering with autoscale. This improvement solves the current existing deployment architecture problem for clustering, which had a cluster confined to a single AZ, meaning that a failure of an AZ would bring down the whole cluster. 
With multi-AZ clustering, ASAB and FTDB clusters can span multiple AZs, enhancing resilience. The second enhancement, which is related to this, is that clusters now support autoscale, which allows clusters to dynamically scale based on changes in load. Coming in at our third enhancement is the AWS Dual Arm Deployment Gateway Load Balancing Support, which solves the problems we faced in 741 with single arm topologies, where all traffic was hairpinned on one data interface on ASAB or FTDV for egress traffic. With the new Dual Arm topology, which is for egress traffic only, there are two data interfaces for handling traffic, of which the outside interface has a public IP. The inspected outbound traffic is forwarded directly to the internet via the internet gateway, and network address translation is completed by ASAB and FTDB. And with that, we've covered the highlights for 7.6. If you're interested in more information, please check out the full 7.6 playlist and the description below for links to additional content and information. See ya!